Okay, so we're just right outside of our apartment. There's a beautiful, looks like castle or a state that used to be here. It's called Villa Dieste and it's right outside. So we're gonna just take a look around. It's 13 euro per person to come in for an adult. It's supposed to have beautiful gardens and beautiful waterfalls and all kinds of just amazing stuff. We're going to see the Sistine Chapel tomorrow and I'm completely blown away by this. So I don't know how much better things can get in the Sistine Chapel, but this is pretty freaking amazing. Every single room is just hand-painted masterpiece. If you look outside the window, it's like a masterpiece of nature. It's like the most beautiful place we've ever seen. This is the most beautiful building I've ever I think I've ever been in. I've never seen art in every single room of a building painted directly onto the wall and ceiling. So we're heading outside to the garden now, which is supposed to be spectacular. getting kicked out just before the sun sets. They do close at 7.30. So hopefully by the time we get to the top, we'll just see the sun going down. This is the most beautiful place I've ever seen in my life. We've seen a lot on this trip. And there were some times where I was sure I wouldn't see anything more beautiful. But those painted rooms and painted ceilings and then this garden with this sunset, this is it. This is the most beautiful place I've ever been. Yeah. So, made it. The kids and Jess are going somewhere and I'm doing this tour by myself and then me and Jess are gonna switch and then Jess is gonna do it by herself and I'm gonna take the kids to a park or something. The reason we did it like that is because the kids are think are done with this, <laughs> done with all seeing all these beautiful sights. Everett goes, I don't wanna be in Italy anymore. There's too much history. So this tour is about three hours long. It gets me into the Vatican, it gets me into the Basilica, and then afterwards I can buy a ticket that takes me to the top and it gives me a great view of the city. So it starts in about 10 minutes and I'm sure I'll just be one of the million people walking through the crowd. So our guide is now getting tickets for everybody. And just like everything else in Rome, it's busy as hell. There's a million people here. So when you actually come in here, they check your bags, scan all your stuff, because it's technically you're going into like a different country. 
the Vatican has its own rules, its own laws, its own everything. So it's basically it looks like an airport. So we're heading into the Sistine Chapel. No video allowed, so I'm gonna have to stop it here and I'll let you know what I see when I get out. Okay, so left the Sistine Chapel and after seeing all this stuff, you're kind of just like, well, this is nice, but it looks, to me anyway, didn't really wow me any more than everything else. Like it's stunningly beautiful, so well done. So is everything else in this place. And now, once I get to the end, it's just like, kind of how I felt when I was walking through the castle. It's just like, this amount of opulence is ridiculous. <laughs> it's just room after room after room of like, ridiculousness. <laughs> I had to leave my group because Jess is outside with the kids and her tour is starting. And I'm not even close to being done. I just left the group and just kind of beelined it. So I was just kind of blasting through everything now. But like I said, at the end of it all, you're just like, I don't know, sensory overload. I gotta get to the basilica, get through the basilica, try and get to the top, all while getting down to Jess within the next half an hour. inside St. Peter's Basilica and it is the craziest place I've ever seen. It is so grand and massive. Like I've never seen anything like it. I'd say this is way better than the Sistine Chapel and the museum. Just come here. It's free. You gotta wait in a long line so come early. But it is... It's just... It's enormous. All right, that is it for the Vatican Museum and St. Peter's Basilica. I'm exhausted, like system overload, using too many senses for one day. It's, uh, it's a lot to take in. I'd say St. Peter's Basilica must do 110%. It is the most beautiful church I've ever seen in pictures, videos, like this is unreal. Sistine Chapel, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, it just wasn't, the museum was amazing, but there's just so many people in there. You're just like literally cattle, shoulder to shoulder, butt to butt, it was just exhausting. You're just like slowly moving along. Maybe if you were by yourself, um, you could kind of take your time and stop, but with a group, it's just, they're just pushing you through like cattle, but here, at St. Peter's Basilica, they time it 
so that they're only allowing so many people in at a time and there is plenty of room to just walk around and take it in. There's no way that I can do it justice, just how grand it is. It's unbelievable. If you're not good with crowds, oh, it's windy. If you're not good with crowds, I would skip this completely. There's just too many people. I would highly recommend going to Tivoli and doing what me and Jess did yesterday at uh, Villa di Este. That was zero crowds, still beautiful paintings, beautiful waterfalls. It's just, it's such a beautiful place. Just like everything else here. So, still recommend it, but I'm dead tired. Two hours later. Met up with Jessica and the kids, had a little snack, coffee, and now we're sitting in the basement of a Hertz rental car because we're getting a car to go to Naples tomorrow. The gentleman said, I'll be five minutes with your car and he's washing it outside. It's been half an hour. Did I mention I was tired? Did I mention that? I'm tired. You don't look too lively yourself. We woke up in four in the morning. Yes, we are all tired. Five in the morning, I not four. Oh wow, an hour makes such a difference.